Um, I work as a counselor at the um, Institute um, for Frontier Areas uh, of Psychology and Mental Health in, in Freiburg, it's the IGPP. And I'm doing counseling and research since more than 20 years in this um, area. Um, okay. Yeah. And I want to give at first uh, a definition um, of exceptional experiences. Um, the term exceptional experiences is used for all experiences that deviate in their quality, their cause or their genesis from the reality beliefs of things concerned and or their social environment and or epistemological concepts, scientific principles and laws that are established in modern societies. And important, it is ideologically neutral and does not imply any statements about the reality status of such experiences or the mental health status of the people reporting them. We developed a model of phenomenon basic classes of exceptional experiences and it uh, was inspired by the theory of mental representations. Um, it's a phenomenological approach for the classification of exceptional experiences and um, it is not restricted to naturalism like the paradigm of Metzinger. Um, the ontological status of exceptional experiences remains open here. So the essence of the, the model is that mental representation of humans is based on a phenomenal reality model with two fundamental components or submodels. Internally generated states of the organism are represented as sensation, emotions, cognition, cognitions, etc., in the so called self model or self domain. And external stimuli and conditions, including one's physical body, are represented in the so called world model. And self and world um, are separate domains, but they are connected by psychophysical correlations. And as a logical consequence of um, this um, dualistic uh, concept, we have four basic classes of possible phenomena. Um, here we see we have the self domain and the self, um, oh, sorry, that has to be the world domain on the right side, sorry, the self domain and the world domain. And we can have deviations in the self domain, like egodystonic influences or the feeling to be possessed and call we internal phenomena. And on the other side, in the world domain, we have deviations that we know as poltergeist phenomena, apparitions and so on. So we have these two, two domains. And as I said before, they are connected by psychophysical correlations and there is a baseline of so-called um, normal psychophysical relations. But we can have deviations um, we can have a deficit where we have a disconnection of usually connected elements of self and world, automatisms, sleep paralysis, or out of body experiences, what we call dissociation phenomena. And in the other direction, we have so called coincidence phenomena as a connection of usually disconnected elements of self and world, what we know as extrasensory perception or meaningful coincidences. So the idea is that. These four classes of phenomena are, so to say, the building blocks of exceptional phenomena. So if we have an exceptional experience, we can reduce these experiences to single phenomena, which um, are um, um, from these classes. So, this model has been confirmed by factor analysis in different empirical studies. We have a comparative study with six samples with IGPP clients, Swiss general population with German students, with people reporting near-death experiences, meditators, and um, a small sample um, from the USA, from the general population. And we used our questionnaire on the phenomenology of exceptional experiences, which each items for uh, uh, each of the four phenomenon classes. And here you see a diagram. We have a scale from zero to four, never, seldom, sometimes, often, very often. The question is how often 
how frequent people have experienced um, such phenomena. Here you see the classes, internal phenomena, dissociation phenomena, um, external phenomena, and the coincidence phenomena. And normally people, individuals, have um, certain profiles of these phenomena. In the total sample, we have um, this profile for the IGPP clients. And if you compare this profile with the other samples, we see that we have very um, similar profiles for the Swiss population and the German, German students, but not so frequent. Then we have here the USA population between our general population and, and, and people seeking advice. And then we have here meditators and we have um, people with near-death experiences and we see these people have the, the most frequent um, exceptional experiences. But what is very um, impressive is that, that, that we have very similar profiles. So what could this mean? Uh, we have a continuous um, distribution of actually in different populations and this may suggest a general human disposition. Then we have same proportions um, of the phenomenon basic classes in different populations, which suggest a universal structural determinants of, ex yeah, of exceptional experiences. And if, um, and if we, we have the IGPP clients and the, they are of particular interest in finding structural determinants, because they have a disposition for frequent, intense, and stressful exceptional experiences. These experiences are linked to their biography, to life circumstances, and to psychodynamics. And so we have a stud study with representative sample of 2,356 counseling cases between 1998 and 2014. And based on cluster analysis and principal component an analysis, we can describe six typical patterns of exceptional experiences, which you see here. Um, we have two patterns which um, um, of, 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 of pure internal phenomena on the left side, the internal presence and influence pattern. Um, and on the right side, we have the poltergeist and apparitions pattern with pure external phenomena. Then we have two patterns of coincidence phenomena. One, the extra extrasensory perception pattern is more linked to internal phenomena and the meaningful coincidences are more linked to external phenomena. And we have also two patterns of dissociation phenomena. On the left side, we have more linked to internal phenomena, automatisms and mediumship. And on the other side, sleep paralysis and nightmare, which is more linked to external phenomena. So we have these six patterns and you see that looks like a symmetry um, and like a complementarity, so to say. Um, so this is not the only interesting thing. We have also a continuum, an internal continuum um, which starts a one-sided orientation of awareness and a kind of internal perception with extrasensory perception pattern. Then we have an internal intrusion of phenomena. And then we have an internal occupation in the pattern of automatism and mediumship. And this leads sometimes to a loss of behavior control with automatisms and things like that. So, um, if you look once again for these patterns, we see that the extrasensory perceptions, coincidences of internal and external states like telepathy, clairvoyance, and peak cognition are interpreted as an extrasensory receiving of information. And this is a subtle kind of bonding um, of an internal bonding to external events, so to say. And with the pattern of internal presence and influences, we have egodystonic thoughts, and feelings, somatic sensations, inner voices and images interpreted as a manipulation by humans or foreign forces, which is a more intense bonding by an internal intrusion of egodystonic phenomena. And 
in the following uh, pattern with medium ship and automatism, we have an ego dystonic behavior uh, with movement, automatic writing, channeling, and this is maybe interpreted. Um, uh, it's it's not only really a bodily attack. It's 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 interpreted as a occupation, so to say, and a control by perhaps by alien beings and a bonding by an internal occupation. So we have the same for the external continuum, where we have um, also a one-sided orientation of awareness, starting with, with meaningful coincidences in the world domain and ending with um, of behavior control with sleep paralysis and nightmares. So we have meaningful coincidences like true oracles, strikes of bad luck, series of numbers, and they seem to arrange by a higher order and address to the self. So there's a perception of an external autonomy. And then we have poltergeist and apparitions with external phenomena. And this seems to be a manifestation of invisible forces, entities, or ghosts for the people concerned. And in into external autonomy. And then we have nightmares and sleep paralysis, um, external attacks on the realized body by a nocturnal presence, like a subtle presence of physical perceptual being. And this is like an occupation by an external autonomy. Um, um, respectively, the, the, the world domain is occupied by an external autonomy, so to say. So if we have the whole picture, we see that we have two continua, um, a continuum from, from an internal continuum, starting with extrasensory perception to automatism and mediumship and an external starting with meaningful coincidences and ending with sleep paralysis and nightmare. And this means these are not discrete patterns, they are overlapped and people normally not or in many talk not only about one pattern, um, they have experiences with, with one or two in the average. So, and, and here you once again see autonomy decreases and bonding increases in the self model on the internal continuum and on the world, in the world domain, bonding increases or reliability, so to say, of the physical world and autonomy increases. So what kind of determinants may be responsible for, for these um, ICSI patterns? Um, we have done a cluster analysis on the basis of the six uh, patterns, and then we find the significant differences between six client tips regarding social bonding. So social bonding is, um, is, is, is this really um, um, very, a very significant, um, there's a really significant correlation with these patterns um, in difference um, to, to gender, which is not significant, or religion or education, for example. So and very, um, most strongly, um, um, differentiation is by close partnership. So we have normally a general difference between our IGPP clients and the general population. In our IGPP sample, um, only 53% of um, the clients are in a close partnership when they contact our institute. And if you have, for example, the Switzerland, um, the, the general population, you have, 20, uh, you have 72% of the adults up to 60 years in, in close partnerships. So um, here in the picture, you see the um, distribution of, 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 of the, the close partnership on the six um, client types. Um, and you see it starts um, with the coincidence pattern um, near um, at the average in our total sample. And then we have a decrease on the left side to 44%, and we have an increase on the right side to poltergeist and apparitions start to 61%. And then 
we have an, uh, an, an, a decrease on the right side from 61 to uh, to 38 percent um, close partnership, but on the other side we have um, suddenly an increase from 44 percent to 65. So this is very interesting, and this is all um, highly significant. And what you see, it seemed to be it seemed to be two two continua with a complementary um, aspect um, of autonomy and bonding in each pattern. So, and then if, if you see these um, differences, um, it's, 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 it's very um, near to, to, um, to, to, to think at the attachment um, theory and attachment research. And attachment research shows that the lack of attention of emotional neglect, physical, and to abuse or loss of caregivers and child to lead to an insecure attachment um, representation in adulthood. And depending on attachment representations, people develop attachment styles or bonding styles as observable behaviors and partnerships. And if you have a secured bonding style, we see close relationships as a reliable source of security, easy access to partner thoughts and feelings, balanced interaction of autonomy and attachment. And an insecure, dismissing um, style goes along with close relationships that do not provide security, but are rather experienced as threatening and avoidance of emotional issues and emphasis on autonomy and independence. And on the other side, um, in the opposite, we have an insecure and meshed bonding style where people longing for close relationships have doubts about the partner's reliability, autonomy, and climbing, and we find that they that it's sometimes maybe a, uh, accompanied by jealousy and anger. So and then we have um, also disorganized patterns. Um, all bonding styles can go along with unreserved trauma and loss from, from childhood or from, 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 um, from the past that can be activated in specific situations and lead to contradictory oscillation between behaviors of bonding styles. And the most common method for assessing attachment representation is the adult attachment interview and meta-analysis um, of thousands or many studies um, show that the, the, the general population in Europe and USA, you find 56% of the people with a secure um, attachment representation and 44 insecure and 60% go along with unsolved trauma uh, or loss. And in clinic examples, you find only 27% with secure attachment representations, 73% are insecure and 43 goes along with unsolved trauma and lost that. What you see is an early violation that, that an early violation of bonding um, as the largest known risk factor for our development of, of uh, mental disorders. So and if you try to relate our IGPP clients and these patterns to bonding, uh, we do so um, in the absence of adult, uh, adult attachment interviews um, and we have to derive them um, from geographical information, life circumstances at the time of counseling. Um, I can give you now a short uh, impression, so to say, for details and case examples. Um, please um, see the coming publication in the British Psychological Society Psychotherapy Section Review. Um, um, there, there you will find many, many details. So we think that the dismissing bonding style should be evident on the internal continuum and an enmeshed bonding style on the external continuum. And if you have the two coincidence patterns, we expect a mixed insecure bonding style. Extrasensory perception go along with closeness on the distance and control of bonding are often helper roles and, and so on. And meaningful coincidence have to do with the delegation of autonomy to others. Internal presence and influence, we found social withdrawal, clients who have always been careful, keep to 
uh, keep a distance to other, uh, to keep a distance um, and, and tend to avoid close relationships, they have an encounter before the counseling with a person which leads to extremely negative feelings. Of him. And in cases of poltergeists and apparitions, social systems, social systems with a strong bonding component um, um, are usually involved. As a rule, it, it's possible to identify a family member who is striving for autonomy is suppressed. And in the dissociation patterns, unresolved loss and trauma may be expected. Bonding values seem to contradict the hypothesis that the internal continuum is associated with dismissing bonding style and the external continuum with an enmeshed style. Um, but however, the biographical data suggests that their life situation is incompatible with their bonding style and therefore dissociation and this organized uh, behavior occur. You see this here in, in this picture, um, that um, we have, so to say, in the beginning, more or less an undefined bonding style with the coincidence types. And then it's very clear dismissive um, for the internal presence and influence type. Um, and very clear and meshed for the poltergeist and apparitions type. And then we have to switch because these people cannot um, um, or, or in these cases, the, the, so the, the genuine bonding style of these people is violated. And so they um, get in a disorganized, uh, they come in a disorganized state. So now at the end, I want to say um, something concrete to autonomy and bonding as, as structural determinants. So autonomy and bonding are fundamental conditions for existence of all living systems. Uh, we have um, autonomy as organizational closure and a self-organization, and we have bonding as openness and energy exchange with the environment. With um, This is um, for every system. And mentally represented, represented in the human phenomenon uh, reality model, we have, we have a self-domain, which we experience as, 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 so to say, the domain of autonomy. And we have the world domain as the area of bonding. Um, and autonomy and bonding are basic human needs that have to be fulfilled. Um, and we experienced autonomy as self-determination, as agency, and bonding as social relatedness and attachment. And here we see the idea that we have in the beginning, we have, so to say, a holism and every system theory begins with an epistemic split where you have a division between the system and the environment. And then on the physical level, you have dissipative systems with self-organization on, on, on one side and energy ex exchange on the bonding side. And with autopoietic systems on the biological level, you have self-reproduction and structural coupling. And on the psychological um, and mental level, you have self-determination, interpersonal and interpersonal relatedness. And so, we have um, at the end in our phenomenal experiences, the world and the self, and we have psychophysical correlations. Um, and we have, so to, so to say, our experiences of autonomy and bonding. And um, we can see this in this model um, that we have a holistic domain which can be interpreted in different ways concerning the ontological status of these phenomena, you can see it as a holistic domain as a, as a human organism, or you can it see in the sense of a, a dual aspect monism at a psychophysically neutral or non-local domain. And um, then you have as complementary aspects of this holistic domain, mental aspects on one side and material aspects. And these aspects are structured by psychophysical correlations. And this is the baseline um, 
so to say, of our normal experiences concerning the relation of self and world. And if we come to the example of poltergeist cases, we have also something like a social mental domain or social domain, social self domain, and typical, um, the typical um, situation in poltergeist cases is that you have a social system with a dominant bonding component or strong bonding component and a repression or blocking of autonomy. And if there is a repression um, of autonomy, so it's repressed to the holistic domain or to the unconscious. And then you have phenomena you have autonomous behavior of physical systems in the world domain. Yeah? Poltergeist phenomena are phenomena of an exceptional kind of autonomy in the world domain. And that is the poltergeist, so to say. What we see here is the point that you have a bonding style, so to say, a social bonding style in the family and avoidance of um, autonomy. And what we see here is that the bonding style of, of an individual or a social um, system can lead, so to say, to exceptional phenomena because basic needs are violated and these basic needs have their origin in, in very fundamental, in a very fundamental holistic domain. And this domain is the origin of all living systems, so to say. And, and this makes sense if you see that your, the normal reality, so to say, is, is broken um, in exceptional experiences. Um, so we have to expect that we have to do with fundamental principles and, um, and uh, which, which are responsible for this symmetry breaks. So this is only a very short um, description of the whole topic. Um, let me give some conclusions at the end. The approach presented here belongs in the context of a still developing clinical parapsychology that cares for people with stressful ICSI. So exceptional experiences can be understood as self-organized processes that at the level of an organismic and psychophysical wholeness respond to and strive to balance a pronounced mismatch of autonomy and bonding. If counseling helps clients recognize and understand that recurrent and distressing exceptional experiences are rooted in their life history and bonding style, it can serve as a bridge and motivate them to engage in psychotherapy. Therefore, people who report persistently distressing exceptional experiences need to be supported to adequately perceive, met, and protect their basic needs. In particular, Positive relatedness experiences in counseling can therapy and, and therapy can promote the integration and balance of autonomy and bonding in clients' daily lives, which should reduce their disposition to stress, st stressful exceptional experiences in the long term. So now I'm at the end. Here's um, the literature, and we can have questions and discussions. Wolfgang, thank you so much. That I mean, I have to say first, you are a master of diagrams and and graphs. I I mean, every it, it really you express yourself so well through those diagrams, and it makes some of these topics so clear. Um, you know, there are I, normally I would say, oh yes, so we, let's talk like this. But you know, I might ask you to bring your diagrams back up because they're just so interesting. The way you put the, you put the different um, aspects in place, so you're talking about stressful, exceptional experiences, but people were wondering what about purposeful exceptional experiences? Like, for example, someone who trains to be a medium versus someone who has not trained and starts having mediumship experiences. Can you talk a little bit about that? Um, yeah, at first I have to say it's um, clear that people who who, who um, contact our counseling service, um, they need help and they are burdened by their experiences. And, um, but, uh, but we have people, um, also some people with um, video mystic um, abilities, um, but um, in, in, in many cases, 
uh, I observed that these people, they, they come not alone to our counseling. <laughs> they have other people who um, are on their side. And they, um, so they have um, a need for bonding to people to serve them. <laughs> Um, and often they have problems to do things on their own or alone because he said, oh, there are very strange energies. Um, I cannot go out of home or things like that. So, so in our context, I see that, 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 that also these people who say from themselves that they have um, special abilities and, and things like that, that they have also a special bonding style, so to say, and um, they get much influence on their social environment in their role at a medium. Um, and um, I have the impression that this um, um, fulfill their need, their bonding need, um, instead of other, um, so to say, possibilities to, to, to um, satisfy your bonding need. So I cannot talk about the general population and 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 all all, all mediums. I can can only um, talk about my personal experiences and, and impressions in the context of the IGPP counseling. But um, in many cases, um, I, I see very different and 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 specific um, kinds of, of of bonding styles, so to say. So. Uh sometimes within families or even friendships uh someone one person may start to experience have these sorts of experience or even develop them on their own but the family members or their friends may not understand mm -hmm. and so might that be a situation where they would come with someone else not for their own peace but for the peace of the other person that's with them yes this is also a problem sometimes people have not problems with their experiences by themselves they have a problem because um, their social environment cannot cope with, with, with their experiences. So, and this is also a, a topic of, of um, different cultures and, and so on. If, if we have people from, from Turkish people or people from other cultures, and they came to Germany and they have their experiences, normally they have explanations in their culture and these explanations um, and function here, so to say, and um, um, so so this are this is also um, um, a problem. Yeah. But what I have to say is not all people who have exceptional experiences have to um, have an, an unsecure bonding style or or, or um, psychological problems. But if you see um, the typical cases of crisis telepathy and, and, um, and, and spontaneous exceptional experience, you see have also to do with autonomy and bonding. If you have near-death experiences, if you have um, the typical um, precognition, it's, it's all about um, very um, um, uh, situations where bonding is violated because someone is is dying or, or things like that. So so you you have um, you have this all um, often between people with a strong emotional relationship, and if something happened to to one of the two, the other has so to say an extrasensory perception of this event. So you have here you have an external um, factor. Um, which leads to this phenomena, but it has, it has also to do with a violation of bonding, so to say, and then you have a phenomenon. It's really interesting, I, and I love your model. I love the way um, you describe the poltergeist activity and with the suppression. Um, but do you do you see? You know, many people have these experiences of abductions or encounters. Do you see this fitting into your model as well? Um, then we have to, to um, make a difference between the phenomena which are experienced and so to say the belief systems or, or, or the explanations or interpretations. If people come with, um, so to say, with an abduction by aliens, um, 
okay, this is not phenomenological. And I have to ask, okay, what have you experienced in detail? And then what they, what they, what they, what they told mostly is that they have an impression of out of body experiences, so to say. And then they have um, a blackout. Um, and then, so, so you, you have something like, like a dissociation phenomena. Um, and then people try to explain, and then they have read books about aliens and things like that. And so they have an explanation for their experience. It's, it's the same with ghosts. If people come, uh, we have a ghost in our house, I, I don't know nothing what they have experienced. And I have to ask, okay, um, what, um, what does the ghost uh, do? Or what, what, um, what, what, what have you perceived? And then they say, oh, there was um, a, 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 a change in the temperature. And then we hear knockings in, in, in the walls. And then we have these, uh, this and that. And then we have, so to say, the phenomena and the ghost is the explanation as, as a causal explanation for these um, inexplicable phenomena. And, and we try to get, uh, to, to get away from, from, from the explanations and come to, and this a phenomenological ap approach, come to the phenomena. And, and, and the interpretation is, so to say, it's possible to have different interpretations. And in our counseling, we are ideologically, ideologically neutral and, and, and we accept the belief systems of the people, but, but we want to know what they have experienced at first. Um, and if their belief systems are not very comfortable or, um, or not helpful, then we, we try to give alternative explanations or theories or concepts. I'm getting a number of comments saying how much they enjoy the presentation and how much they enjoy the model and how, how really re they can really relate to it. Uh, we have one question uh, that I'm going to just read it. Have you considered a measure of locus of control as a component um, regarding bonding styles as you define dismissive, enmeshed in contrast between internal and external presence of PK? Mm -hmm. um... Not yet, but um, this is, so to say, we're a new step in our research um, that, that we found these really um, significant um, um, correlations with bonding styles. And, and we want to, to have adult attachment interviews with um, all clients of, with all patterns. And also we, yeah, we will look to other correlates like locus of control and things like that. But this, this is, so to say, um, our future um, program, a program for the future. Yeah. Well, this has been really wonderful. And I have to say that there are uh, uh, a number of people referring back to a presentation we had last night, which was an investigation of an ostensible poltergeist uh, that was done. I don't know if you've seen the recording of that presentation, but um, if you have, It'd be wonderful to hear your thoughts on it. Yeah, um, I'm in contact with Jerry Solvin and we talked about his, his model before. And um, <laughs> last night it was two o'clock in the morning. And um, but I will will um, uh, look the the video. But but I, but I know his concept and, and and the model because we talked about it. Yeah. Well, that's wonderful. Yes, uh, I think there's a lot of a lot of interest in in trying to determine how to address these sorts of unconscious and just spontaneous experiences that occur, and trying to help people through them. You've you've done an amazing job of presenting this today. It's been very interesting.